In doing this YouTube channel the last couple of years, I've been super fortunate to be able to test out a lot of bikes. I think I've personally ridden about 60 to 70 bikes. And there have been a handful that have stuck out in my mind as really cool and really interesting bikes. These bikes aren't the lightest, they're not the most technologically advanced, nor are they necessarily the most expensive. But there was something in the geometry or some of the features that they offered that were just really dang cool. In this video, I'm going to share with you the six bikes that just broke my head. If you guys are digging this content, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon. That is the best way to do it. You get access to lots of cool perks with brands that we love as well as monthly giveaways. If that's too much of a commitment, consider buying one of our new new stem caps in the web store. All the links in the description below. The first bike on the list is the Surly Midnight Special. I know we don't usually think of Surly as necessarily super baller bike, but they do make really interesting bikes. When the Midnight Special first came to market, it was really unique. It's one of the first bikes that still maintain that quick and responsive road feel, but combined it with some big meats. You also got a bike that wasn't stripped of its utility. You could still put a rear rack on it, front rack, and even a rando rack. The Midnight Special was a perfect combination of fun, responsive handling, nice big supple tires, as well as utility. Since then, many bikes have come out on the market to replicate that, but when the Midnight Special first came out, it truly broke my head in all the uniqueness it offered at a fairly attainable price. The next bike on the list is one that I have referred to a lot on the channel, and it's still haunting me as one of those bikes that got away and that is the second iteration of the Ritchie Outback. The first iteration of the Outback was fun but still was well within that cross inspired box. The second iteration however zigged when everyone else zagged. It still kept the one inch non tapered head tube as well as a really flexy carbon fork for supreme front end suppleness. It still maintained external routing to keep maintenance nice and easy. The big change, however, was the really long chain stays at 453, which in bike terms is like a country mile. This made for a bike that was extremely supple and ultra smooth to ride. You in essence got touring bike geometry without the touring bike weight or the touring bike over stiffness. To this day, I think the Outback still remains relatively unique in this case. And for that reason, it blew my mind. Talking about interesting bike geometries, the next one really opened up my mind in terms of what a gravel bike could do. And that is the Sharon Cycles Cinder. This is a gravel bike which takes on progressive mountain bike geometry. And by that, I mean it has a really long front center. It has a really slack head tube angle while still maintaining a fairly short end. What you got was a bike that was still a sprightly climber, but when things turned downhill, it felt like a mountain bike with that big swoopy steering while still running typical gravel tire sizes. It was a really interesting case in which it might have been slightly underbiked tire wise, but geometry wise, it could handle the terrain with a plum. This really interesting mix, borrowing from different cycling disciplines, made for a really unique handling bike, and that is why it's on this list. The next bike is like a fine and rare whiskey, and it is the Norther Lion. The Norther Lion was a collaboration between well respected frame builder Jeff Lyon, known for making really lightweight rain inuring bikes, and the now defunct bike shop Norther Cycles in Portland, Oregon. Jeff Lyon and Norther collaborated on a semi production model. And what's unique about it is it's a super low trail bike in the front. The construction was with really thin tubing, 747. It had a hard weight limit of 175 and it also had really long chain stays. Riding the bike was simultaneously familiar and disorienting at the same time. The really low trail front took some getting used to, I'll be honest. But with my short time on the bike, I took it on some hill repeats on Mount Tabor in Portland and was surprised at how well it climbed. You could really feel the bike flex in a good way. It almost propelled you up the hill. And, and riding that bike, even though I only had a day with it, really stuck with me. Sadly, Norther Cycles has closed and I think Jeff is winding down production. In my head, it will be like a super fine and rare whiskey that I got to sample once years ago. The next bike is the Jones SWB. While I've used the Jones bar on many bikes in the past, and Jeff Jones himself has a very particular geometry in mind that pairs best with the Jones bar. Most Jones bike until this model came out were pretty inaccessible. Again, this is pre-pandemic pricing, but you could get a complete for under $2,000 at the time. And for that, you got three inch fat meat, the Jones bar, a worksman like build kit, but probably more importantly, a bike whose geometry was optimized to work with the Jones bar. So what made it special? Well, despite the three inch tires, the handling of the bike was really light and nimble. Totally not something I was expecting from a bike that looked like it rolled 
straight out of the apocalypse. With upright position and the short stem, it places rider's hands near the steering axis, making for a light and maneuverable steering bike. To me, it was like riding an adult cruiser bike built for the apocalypse. It really opened up my eyes as to what a well-designed bike with the right handlebars and the right geometry could feel like. Didn't necessarily have to steer like a tractor, even though it had big tires. And the last bike is a bike I reviewed this year, and it's the Soma Buena Vista. This is a bike that I think a lot of people will ride off as just a city bike made for slow casual riding but if you actually hop on it it's fairly quick and responsive i found it surprisingly stiff with lots of get up and go despite its mixed design or probably because of its mixed design and the handling up front felt more endurance road bike than chillax city bike if you ever wanted a bike to sandbag a gravel event then this is the bike to do it because no one will suspect a bike with such dainty looking tube could be so quick and responsive so that's my list for six bikes that just broke my head hopefully they're not the usual suspects that you'll see on other sites i really do try to review bikes that i'm authentically interested in and, and not just the latest and greatest. So if you guys appreciate that, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It's the best way to do it. Keeps the lights on, keeps all these interesting bike reviews coming. And as always, everybody keep the supple side down.